All right, guys, it is a good day. We finally got far enough south where the weather has warmed up a bit. It's still raining. <laughs> it's still kind of overcast, but it is in the 50s Fahrenheit. And actually, the kid, it's warm enough for the kitties to want to go outside. And they're still a little cautious. They still are trying to figure out Europe. But in any event, we are headed over to see my cousin <laughs> and him and his wife are traveling here in Europe and have been for a while and they reached out to us and said hey let's meet up and so we we're excited I haven't seen my cousin in a lot a lot of years a lot of years, lot of years. and so they're traveling here from the United States so we're headed over there to see him we will meet up with him tomorrow but along the way we stopped off on this small little town it has turned out perfect for the cats and I know y'all missed me terribly in the last <laughs> video. I was under the weather. I want you to know I'm not 100%, but I am definitely getting better. And I'm taking care of myself, and we're doing good. What you doing, Bubba? What you doing, Bubba? Come on, Nanner. Come on. She's a little prancing. Come on, plug in. So we left Dijon and we're headed to the Dardogna region. Now we haven't done a ton of research on that. We do know there's some really cool spots over there, some cool caves, Obviously some cool history and buildings and whatnot. So we're looking forward to seeing my cousin as well as visiting that region. But as we were driving across the countryside, and forgive us for not getting any video, we did notice that there was a lot of white cows and these are the beef cows of France. And so they have a model of them here. Maybe when we're driving tomorrow, we'll see if we can get some pictures. But they're really cute. They kind of got little sh shaggy hair, like they're all ready for the winter. We don't see a lot of beef cattle here in France, or at least we haven't until now. And we've seen a few, a lot of dairy cows. That's where we are. But anyway, I thought maybe we'd take a quick stroll around this little town uh, before it gets dark. There's a lot of things to love about France. There really is. I mean, guys, we are loving this country. The roads have been really, really good. In fact, I would say the roads are better than the U.S. Some of the best roads that we've ever driven on holistically across the country. And all of a sudden, you're coming up in these little towns and you just find these little historic niches where kind of everything was protected and some of this stuff dates back to I don't even know when 1100s 1200s maybe even before 1400s and so that's really cool and also camping here is really super easy there's little camp spots everywhere this one right here in town is free if you want electric or water you put some coins in there and you pay for service but you can see we're no more than a block or two away from well, this big church with this big clock tower and right here we can even buy some bread right here in the machine the vending machine and while well, there's a baker right across bakery right across the way so we've been loving the bread the cheese the cream the milk the leeks, the shallots, all the delicious foods, the cheese, I think I already said that, maybe it's worth repeating. But anyway, look at this old historic church or building. We'll see if we can get in there so I can show you guys. I don't know, but it's kind of a windy day. Oh, listen, um, it's kind of a windy day, but I was able to pop the drone up a little bit. Hopefully those shots came out okay. But here we go. Inglés Saint Etienne. Let's see if we can get in. It doesn't look like I can get in, but if you guys can see the walls of this church, I'm sure it's had some remodeling or some stuff done to it, but still, the walls are just worn to brick walls. And as we come down in here, there's more of the, more of the structures. It's all just, so tight in here, look at this. The old road. 
rough lines with the moss. And it looks like this kind of brings us out to the main road here. <laughs> well, this morning we hopped up and to be honest with you, we kind of had a long uneventful ride down to the Dardonia region and it's just we're running from the weather we're running from the cold but more importantly super excited to see my cousin I probably haven't seen him when we were trying to figure it out it's probably been at least 20 years and he's just not a relative that I knew super well we grew up in different parts of the U.S. But we made it to Charlotte a day before they're here, which has given us an opportunity to sort of scope out the town. Now we found this little campsite up on the hill, sort of overlooking this little medieval town. Now Charlotte is sort of one of the most historical, beautiful medieval cities in this Dardonia region, which boasts a lot of cool things. And one is really high priority, and that's going to be to some his, see some historic caves. But I will tell you, this town is cool. Now, the problem is, it is forecasted to rain like 100% today, 100% tomorrow, 100% the next day. And it's also supposed to be cool cold surprise surprise that's how it's been since we've been in France anyway but we got a little break in the rain like like an hour and I was able to pop up the drone and give you some sights of this little town now I did go down and walk around the town to see it and these little narrow streets and little restaurants and churches and stone buildings and some of the stuff that you guys have seen in some of our video, other videos was really, really awesome here in Sarlat. The problem is, it is raining so hard and I don't have my umbrella and I just was only able to pull out the camera a couple times to get a few shots. So as amazing as this little town is and the hub of this little Dardonia region, I just didn't get any great footage of walking around and showing you the city. Fortunately, we got you the little drone shots. So <laughs> in this case, we're both disappointed. We didn't get to explore as much as we did, but we certainly enjoyed this as a hub. And guess what? Tomorrow we get to meet up with our cousin. We're super excited and we're gonna head off to a really kind of interesting, unique adventure. Good morning, guys. Big surprise. It is raining. Oh. Ta-da! And you may hear some background conversation going on, and that's because we have met up with Kurt's cousin, <laughs> Mike and Betsy, and they are taking us to a museum. Now, what's exciting, guys? You know, we don't do a lot of tours because of the budget, so... They're, they're gifting us a nice tour to see something absolutely amazing. I'm going to wait y'all, make y'all wait a few minutes till we get inside to tell you what it is because I'm having to be careful and protect this pocket from the rain. But you guys are going to love this. Let's go see it. So this museum is really in a cool building. It kind of feels like you're partially underground. And that's really cool because we're actually going to go down into some caves with some really, really, really old uh, cave wall paintings. So we're going to take a tour and learn a lot more about it. And then I'll be able to tell you a lot more of the history. But we're super excited. So we just toured the cave. Unfortunately, guys, we are not allowed to video or even take pictures when we're inside of the cave. But I gotta tell you, it was magnificent and unbelievable. One of the most famous caves with cave art in it in the world. It's called Lasco. Uh, 
now we are in an after room where we will be able to film and show you some bits and pieces where they've done some more uh, reproductions. So I will show you some of that as I tell you the bits I remember from the tour. First, last co paintings were done about 21,000 years ago. A few things that make Lascaux so famous are, one, whenever it sealed itself up, uh, they don't know when that was, thousands of years ago, it did it so well that the moisture didn't get in. Very few uh, st stagmites, staglites, I can't remember what they're called, formed, which means there was very little moisture in there. And the color was preserved incredibly well. One of the most color preserved cave art findings ever in the world. So it is beautiful to look at. Uh, another thing is there are symbols, dots, little graph looking signs, bars, zigzags. They don't know what they are, but they are definitely connected to different pieces of the art. They believe it's some sort of a communication that had started at that time. Another one is this cave. Uh, includes some animals that did not exist in real life. And when the cave was discovered, which I'm gonna tell you how that happened, because uh, it's a very cool story in a few minutes, uh, the Pope came and he called this area the Sistine Chapel of Cave Art, which of course started to make it famous. And he named this mythical creature that is at the very beginning of the entrance to the beautiful art, and he called it a unicorn. It does sort of resemble a unicorn, except for it has two horns. But the, the mythical creatures showing up, and then also the, the tribe or the clan that did this, this artwork uh, seems to be the only ones that had animals with big bodies, little heads, and little tiny legs. So a little creativity in the artwork here. And then probably one of my favorites is I think that our tour guide told us that only three times in all of cave art history have they discovered the color purple. And the color purple is bright and distinct in this cave. And it's used twice and it's used in some of those symbols. And uh, they mixed the red rocks and the black rocks and then they had to burn it. But it is a distinct purple and Lasco has that. So with those cool things, that makes Lasco one of the most famous. Relative to other caves throughout the region, it is small. Um, I mean, we could easily walk it in less than an hour, and that's stopping to admire everything. Some caves are kilometers long. This one was maybe two to 300 meters long. There are portions of the cave that are designed for anyone that walks in to see. And then there are little hidden sections where it looks like only a chosen few were allowed to descend down into a shaft and see some special art. So it's a, got a lot of cool features to it. I so wish we could have filmed it for you, but they just wouldn't let us. I'm going to show you as much as I can here in this reproduction room. And on that note, let me tell you the story of how it was discovered. So I told you the cave art was done 21, 22,000 years ago. And it was discovered in the 1960s by four boys who were playing out in the field and a tree had fallen over and underneath the tree stump, there was an opening and as little boys will do they scurried down in there with just one little tiny gaslight and uh, they discovered the cave now what else you need to know about Lasco is for for several years during the 60s they did allow people to access the cave as it was out in nature in the in the, the fields here but they started to deteriorate quickly because of the oxygen and the moisture getting into the cave after thousands and thousands of years. So they sealed it off. Only a few scientists go in once or twice a year just to check on things. But before they did, they went in with electronic lasers and totally scanned the entire cave system. And they reproduced it exactly within a millimeter everything is exact. So the cave that we just toured, that I can't show you, 
is actually an identical reproduction of the real thing and the real thing is protected and will be saved forever and ever and the colors will not fade so that is pretty epic now they did a few more reproductions and that's the room we're in now and that's what i'm showing you the footage of so as our tour winds down there's one last little tribute to the four boys playing in the field that stumbled up on this thing And I think earlier, guys, I had told you 1960 they discovered it, but it was 1940. It was in the 60s that they sealed it up again. Now what's interesting is once everything was discovered and that part of their lives was over, they didn't see each other again. 40 years later and there they are none of these boys are still alive today the last one passed away just two years ago at the age of 93 but what a find a day of playing in the field turned out to be all right let's head back to the car guys I will tell you that the cave and the paintings and the museum were really captivating. Uh, it was just um, really kind of surprising that how ancient some of this stuff is and really to hear the stories of what the different creatures were, the paintings and stuff like that. But I think what was more intriguing for me is to imagine what they were trying to depict in the pictures and of course there are some ideas or some suggestions that they presented to us but nobody really knows and so as this those stuff goes back it's like so many things that we look at we really don't understand or comprehend but just to imagine what was going on what it would have liked to be in those caves and that type of lifestyle uh, it's like nothing I can describe. So I think this was just an absolutely amazing tour. They did a really good job of recreating the paintings, the cave, the ambiance of telling the story. Absolutely riveting. And so I hope you guys enjoyed it. But we're off tonight, our next adventure. So we drove about 45 minutes north on some beautiful windy roads through the foothills. Beautiful, but so much rain. We've made it to this town that I will put on the screen because I can't remember the name of it. It starts with a P. And we're gonna grab some lunch with Mike and Betsy. And this town is stunning. Right now we're on a little pedestrian street and there's lots of little alleys and a big beautiful church with round domes. But first up is definitely lunch.
first glance, this church may not look as, as ornate as some of the others uh, that we've taken you into. But to see from the inside the onion looking domes and the architecture and the structure of the ceiling is amazing. And it's dark, but I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But this wall back here is wood carving with so much detail. And the number of detailed stained glass windows in this church. There's a lot of them. And the chandeliers may be my favorite. <laughs> it's just amazing how far they can span for these arch roofways. It really is just something to behold. And I hope you guys can see this. We're having a hard time seeing it because of the darkness. With this wooden sculpture, a snow site is incredible. So as you guys know, it has pretty much been raining every day since we've been in France for four weeks. And down in this southern region, it has been really raining for the last couple days. And the rivers and the flooding is apparent. I'll try to show you right here. But uh, there are flood warnings and people are out just watching this river rise. Yeah, we watched and them tow some cars. Yeah, there's a parking lot down there by the river that's flooding and they've been towing cars out there for safety. You can see those trees are on what's normally dry land. Oh, there's logs going down the river. They are definitely dealing with a flood here in this town and you can tell the residents are concerned. Before we wind this video down, I wanna take a minute and tell you about our cool hosts for the day, Mike and Betsy. Yes, they're family, but they're also travelers like we are. They just finished a really cool segment of the Camino over in Spain, and they're slowly, they're working their way up to Paris before they head home to the States to see family, but they're not staying home long. They're gonna hit the road again and be back over here doing more traveling. I have a feeling you will see them again in the future. What a special visit. I gotta say, it's always nice to meet friends on the road, but to meet family, it was an amazing visit, and we are thankful. And we're also passengers, which is very, very rare. Yes, in a tiny little car. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.